rushing down rows of seats to leap onto the court after your unranked team has taken down a top five seed in the country. It's a dream for college students, a bucket list item I have yet to check off, but it's a nightmare for the opposing team to exit the court safely. I'm Kaylee Tallman, joined by Lauren Harth and Ethan Ellis on this edition of Sports Court on Penn State Sports Night. Court stormings are a hot topic of debate right now after an ecstatic fan collided with Caitlin Clark following an Ohio State win over number one Iowa. And Dutes' Kyle Filipowski was injured at the hands of Wake Forest fans celebrating the Demon Deacons win over the Blue Devils. Is it possible to stop the flood of thousands of fans motivated by pure bliss? Is it fair to the players for their seasons to be put at risk at the hands of fans? Lauren, should the NCAA ban court storming? Absolutely not. There are two reasons I stand by this. First, it's a part of what college basketball is. Those fans in that atmosphere, they get so into the game, they're the ones helping propel their team to beat this unranked team. Similarly, it's not feasible to assume that there would be a way to stop court storming. Those fans are going to get to the court no matter what. So really, it's just you got to let it happen. Yeah, so I think court storming does need to be banned, and I think it had its run, but at this point, it's starting to become too dangerous. We have seen uh, Kyle Filipowski on the Duke Blue Devils get injured, and Caitlin Clark. I mean, Caitlin Clark is the face of women's college basketball right now, and could you imagine if that was a serious injury that put her out for the season? I mean, she wouldn't be able to chase down Pistol Pete's record right now. She might not have been able to uh, take over as the top leading scorer in women's college basketball history. So realistically, fans should not have that big of uh, ability to make a difference on someone's season. So I think colleges need to start stepping up and the com conferences need to start stepping up and taking more responsibility for these players because really these are their investments and these are the faces of their programs. So Ethan, you're telling me as a student, if your team beat a top number one team, you would not be on the court? Look, I was on the court after the Wisconsin game, and while it is a great experience, it's dangerous to both the players and it's also dangerous to the fans. You don't really realize from watching on TV, but when you're in the middle of that crowd, people are shoving you and almost pushing you to the ground. And if you want to get out, there's absolutely no way you're getting out until the outside of the circle disperses. So it a, poses a danger to the athletes with them getting tripped up, obviously, but also poses a danger to the fans as they're getting crushed in there. And I think there are ways that we can uh, somewhat prevent fans from getting onto the court. I think the first thing is that schools really need to uh, um, have fines up uh, right now, we know the ACC, they don't even find their schools if they have fans storm the court. And at that point, you're basically encouraging fans to storm the court. So I think if the conferences and the NCAA up the fine enough, at some point, schools are going to be forced to do something about it. I have two points to come back at you with. Fans, or I mean players, excuse me, they understand the risk in the game. Purdue, during Zach Eady's past three seasons, has lost 11 times on the road. And 10 of those times, the home team stormed the court. And he said, it's a part of the game. He recognizes the risk, but it's going to happen. It's part of the game. And similarly, down in LSU, Angel Reese stormed the court. She tweeted on social media about it. She's like, stormed the court, almost tripped, but had the time of my life. So these players, they recognize that it's part of the game that sometimes they want to take part in. And they also recognize the risk that they need to do their best to avoid. And on the note of fines, the SEC has fines in place. The first offense is $100,000, and by the third offense, it's up to $500,000. And unfortunately, that's not stopping anyone. So unfortunately, just increasing the fines is not going to do it justice. Those, like, those fans, like I said earlier, are going to get to the court. No matter if there's security standing arm in arm with each other, they're going to find a way to the court. Oh. But Lauren, sorry, Ethan, I'm going to cut you <laughs> off here for a second. But Lauren, so you're saying even though the, the fines aren't really doing a whole lot to stop SEC fans, you think that they shouldn't exist in the Big Ten, in the ACC, in these other conferences? Don't you think there should be some punishment on these programs? I think you could make the argument that there should be a punishment, but... Why increase the fines if it's already not working and these schools are paying money that they have to figure out how to get and orchestrate paying those fees or fines, I mean, and now they're just going to increase it and the same thing's going to repeat again. It's storming the court is not a new thing These with these two instances. So really, what is increasing the fines actually going to do? But look, the thing I see with the fines is that 
those fines, really, it's not going to bankrupt a D1 college basketball program. So that's why I think the schools aren't super uh, concerned about fans storming the court. And it blows up on social media, and it lo it's good media for the, uh, for the teams. It encourages fans to go to the game, and it looks electric. So that's just going to encourage fans to storm the court more. But I think that even if there wasn't court storming, I think the same type of energy would still be brought to these games. Fans like going to these games. They like cheering on their team. And just because the possibility of court storming isn't in the, uh, isn't in the weeds, that doesn't mean that fans are going to purposely avoid the game. They still want to go and support their teams. I think there's just a safer way to do that, and that's without court storming. I think that's an interesting point. But if you, like Kaylee said, it's a bucket list thing for college students. Personally, I'm waiting to check it off mine, and I think that's what gets them so into it and keeps that energy up. They're the ones who, when it's those three points and you're screaming beyond any noise you've ever before and to just erupt that arena to motivate your team to not let the opposing team score. So I think it just helps to know that's a possibility to keep the energy up. So I'll pose a slightly <coughs> different question here. Are court stormings and field stormings the same thing? Do they pose the same threat to those players or is this a different conversation? I think it can be looked at both ways. In a way, storming the football field is a little bit different. It's a bigger field, so those players have a little bit more time to get to the sidelines before the, <clears throat> before the fans are at them at midfield. So I think that poses, it's a different site than whatever, but I think you need to recognize that in a football game too, those fans are going to get there regardless. So the better strategy is to just protect those opposing players. Yeah, when I look at football stadiums, while the field is bigger, the stadiums are also bigger. The one thing I will give football stadiums credit for, however, is they have guardrails in front of the stand, so it makes it harder for fans to get down there. They have to climb over the guardrail and then lower themselves down because some stadiums, they have a pretty big drop from the stands to get onto the field. So it takes longer for the fans to get on there, which does give the players more time to get off the court. And that's another thing that I think college basketball arenas could look at implementing. Put more uh, fences and guardrails in front of the stands without impacting the fans' view of the game. So, Lauren, I'm going to declare you the winner of this sports court <laughs> officially because I agree. I think it's impossible to stop thousands of motivated fans <laughs> from rushing the court. But I am going to say, Ethan, I think you put out a couple great points that would make for a good compromise. So I'll leave you two with this. Lauren, is there any room for compromise in this argument? I think there definitely is. Player safety should remain the number one priority in this. You do not want a potential number one pick in the NBA draft or WNBA draft to get injured on an instance like this. But I think the way you can do that best while still allowing fans to storm the court is have a plan clearly communicated between the home team, the away team, security, all officials involved in it. Because let's be honest, when fans are about to storm the court, it usually is pretty obvious when it's coming. So you can explain to the players that they need to do whatever in their power to get to the sidelines as quick as possible. You can look at these plays and the ball is getting inbounded with less than a second left. At that point, you shouldn't be worried about getting anywhere near the ball. You should be worried about finding the safest and quickest way to your bench, and I think that is the plan that needs to be communicated best. Right, and I think what Lauren and I and everyone here both want is that we want players to stay safe. We don't want to see Caitlin Clarks and Kyle Filipowski's going down on the court because that just takes the fun out of college basketball. It kind of ruins the mood. So we really just want to uh, protect the players and find a good way to do that without taking the energy out of the stadium. That's it for this edition of Sports Court on Penn State Sports Night. Thanks so much for watching and have a great night. Hey everybody, thanks for tuning into this edition of Penn State Sports Night. For more content like this, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel, give us a like, and follow our socials down below. And as always, we are Penn State Sports Night.